Hi guys, welcome back. This is from Play by Pause, and today we're going to talk about one of our exciting, favorable topics. Let's go. Hi guys, welcome back. This is Sean from Play by Pause. For those who have been following our channel since the very beginning of this journey, knows that we have started this channel in the middle of pandemic, and it has been a truly an amazing journey from then. Despite a rough year, we managed to kickstart this content creation journey with you guys, and we truly learned a lot during the whole process. And thanks for all the support. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump right into our top 10 year in 2020. I'm a long time Sony user and I have been using Sony camera for a lot of my wedding projects or the commercial projects. My very first Sony camera is the A7S II and slowly I transit to A7 III and after 5 long years of waiting, finally the A7S III. It's definitely worth waiting because it's an amazing camera and it has a huge step up from the previous camera. Spec wise, the A7S II and A7 III can only shoot 4K 30 frames per second. 60 frames per second in full HD, but the A7S III, you are able to shoot 4K 60 frames per second. Not only that, you can shoot 120 frames per second. But the downside is you have to use a very specific SD card or CF Express Type A. Aside from that, now you are able to film 4K 10 bit 422 internally. But I've encountered some editing issue. I realized there are some laggings. I believe because the file size is too compressed, hence the playback is not smooth. So something to keep in mind. Aside from that, physically there's little difference in terms of size, but the build quality is much better. Uh, for example, the cover of the USB, there's a HDMI port, is much solid compared to micro HDMI. Furthermore, Sony have implemented their latest technology to the A7S III, which is their internal gyro and touch to focus. You can find out more about the internal gyro from our previous video. So now you are able to continuously track your subject with single touch. Unlike the soft focus from a previous generation, you are required to refocus whenever the subject moves. And lastly, now you are able to tilt your screen to the front of the camera, which is very helpful for a vlogger or a YouTuber. The list will not complete without the Master 24mm f1.4 wide-angle lens for the Sony mirrorless camera. When I first held this lens, I was so surprised on how lightweight and solid it feels. Compared to the markets out there, uh, most of the wide-angle lens is much more heavier. Despite it was light, but it's a very capable wide-angle lens. It's tech-sharp and it's fast. Aside from that, I like, I like how lightweight it is so that I can really use this lens on my gimbal for all day without any problem and I can achieve shot like this, this and this. Physically, this lens has an aperture ring which is very useful for filmmakers who like to do manual adjustments. All in all, it's a perfect wide-angle lens for filmmakers. But it's expensive. Since last year, I've been filming more B-roll and behind the scene for YouTube content. I realized that I need a smaller, sturdier, easy bring along tripod. Unlike those convention tripod that's too bulky, you might be wondering why I never choose the famous Joby Gorilla pot. After I did some research, I realized that the leg of the Joby Gorilla pot pops out from the sockets and got loosened over time. So I make a pass on it and I choose the Ulanzi MT-11. The Ulanzi MT-11 have a solid leg yet flexible thanks to the metal bands. Not only does it have a quarter inch metal screw mount, it can turn into a mobile phone mount as well, which is very useful since mobile phone is so accessible. If you get a bundle set, it comes with an accessory, a rig that attached to your tripod where you can mount lights or audio recorder. Something essential that many filmmakers or photographers overlook is the C-Stand and the C-Stand clamp. Both of them are very important nowadays because a lot of content has been created right from home or even in the studio. Normally, a C-Stand will be used to mount heavy equipment such as a light, battery, controller, external monitor, or even 
a flat lay sequence. In our case, we use the system to mount our Aperture Trader D2 with the dome. And we use a system clamp to mount the controller slash battery. And lastly, we use a system clamp to mount the external monitor so that we can overlook what we are shooting right now. If you're wondering whether it's safe to mount everything using the system, and I would say yes, because the system is fully metal and it's heavy enough to counterbalance whatever we mount on top. In other words, it's safe and it's a must for a filmmaker. If you're a filmmaking enthusiast who is looking for budget-friendly yet looking for high-quality cinema cameras that shoots raw, you wouldn't go wrong with the Blackmagic 6K or 4K. Cinema camera typically has a more bulkier design, but the Blackmagic has pioneered the compact size cinema camera to share just how much potential this segment of camera has. Even the Red Komodo has joined the race in making a more portable small cinema camera. If you're afraid of editing raw or managing raw footage, but fear not, Blackmagic has already released plugin for Adobe Premiere Pro, which reads this file. It's a free B raw plugins without going through any conversion process. However, after using a Blackmagic for several months, there's definitely room to improve. First off, there's no autofocus. I believe a lot of filmmakers prefer manual focus, but it's not a bad idea to have autofocus and manual focus as options. You can always switch in between and to achieve the result that you desire. Next, battery life is very limited because the Canon batteries that's built in the Blackmagic can only last maximum 30 minutes. So you're required to mount extra Sony MPF series battery or a V-mount battery. You're also required to get more storage for this kind of cinema camera. For example, I've been using Mixibate for 5 years and it never let me down. I like the song and the artists that they feature. The library is just packed with great music. One thing I like about Mixibate is the mobile app. Not a lot of platforms create a mobile app. Because the mobile app is so easy to use and I can browse songs for my project from anywhere. The search feature and filter allows you to search by genre, mood, artist, keyword and even instruments. Best of all, they provide two versions for each song one with vocal, one purely instrumental, which is very useful for video editing. Light is important in filmmaking and it brings your quality of work to the next level. We have been using the Aperture 300D2 for a while and the things that really stood up is the build quality and the light output. Since it's fully constructed in aluminium, the quality is far more superior than any lights they have used before. The light comes with a controller and a power supply, and it packs in a sturdy carry bag. Pretty worth it for the price you pay. You can mount a V-mount battery on a controller so that you can operate the 300D2 without any power supplies and you can use it anywhere. As for the spec, it produced 5,500 Kelvin color temperature with output of 3,500 lux of light. Although there's a lot of cameras have a low light capability, but external light play a crucial role in terms of storytelling. So light is very important and is a must for your gear list. Wireless Go is one of the smallest and compact wireless microphone system in the market. It comes with a transmitter and a receiver. For only 200 USD, it's total lifesaver. We used to have the Zoom H1 as the wireless system, but the downside is sometimes I'm not sure whether it's recording when I pass the recorder to my client, unless I have an assistant to confirm for me. With Wireless Go, you can hear the audio as you're recording. As you can see, there's a belt clip on both transmitter and receiver, which is a clip that you can clip on the cloth easily. Aside from that, the receiver has a cold shoe adapter which slides on top the hot shoe mount on any camera, which is a great design that makes sense. You can also control the audio level from low to high level dB, which affects the output of the recording. Next, one of my favorite upgrades in 2020 is definitely the iPhone 12 Pro. I'm gonna skip this part because I've been creating a lot of iPhone 12 Pro content lately. If you're interested with that, feel free to check out the link in the description below. If you're a photographer, you're probably familiar with the brand name Moments. 
They are well known in creating lens converter for mobile devices. But did you know that they have an app? Moment apps jam packs with features that's not only for photographers but filmmakers. It unlocks a lot of features of a camera phone, such as full manual control over exposure, shutter speed, color profiles, beat rates, frame rates. That's not all. Some other notable features which we found out extremely useful includes focus picking, zebra stripes, live histogram, just to name a few. I always believe in working more efficiently. So whenever I'm getting a new gear, I will consider that it helps me to uh, have a better workflow and improve the quality of the output. So never chase for the best or latest gear, but the ones that suits you. So there you have it. These are my favorite gears in 2020. Hope you guys like this video. If you guys do like this video, remember to tune in and as always, create, learn, and have fun. I'll see you guys in the next video.